It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to talk about some shooting tips for street photography for the Fuji X100V. You're a beautiful person and you're a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. Thank you for tuning in. I'm enjoying showing you what I'm learning about the Fujifilm X100V. Today, some shooting tips for street photography. I'm really happy with this camera and I'm excited to share uh, things that I'm learning about it. Now, I'm not an expert, I'm not a pro, but these are some things that I think might help you if you're wondering how to get better shots. So the first thing is to use high speed continuous drive. This is your drive mode. You're gonna hit the drive button down on the joystick, half shutter press, and then as soon as you wanna turn that off, that's basically like, you think sports photography, like you rattle off. <laughs> so then it's drive button, half press, uh, or joystick press up, and then half press down. So those are the ways to get in and out of that. So why would you want that? Downtown there's people walking so you might want to use the high speed uh, continuous drive there so that you have people moving through the frame. It's just uh, hard to get the perfect composition so if you're in high speed drive you have like 10 shots to choose from where they might be lined up where the background might be dark, might be hard to separate them, there might not be enough contrast. But if you have 10 to choose from, likely one's gonna be better than the other, so there's a couple examples of that. A subject's moving across the frame and you're not sure you're gonna nail the exact precise moment, and that will just give you 10, 12, I think it's 15 uh, shots, 15 frames per second is the uh, high speed continuous mode. So it's really impressive. Now, here's the other thing. You have another focus mode where you can have it continuous tracking. So you can have your focus and continuous tracking. So as you move it around the frame, it's always picking in the right focus, um, the right focus point. And it's dialing in that focus, keeping it sharp. Now, I would say use that sometimes. And the reason I say that use that sometimes is because it, to me, appears to drain the battery. And, and that makes sense. It's, it's always keeping that uh, focus point razor sharp. So high speed continuous uh, shutter, the drive mode, and then also uh, high uh, continuous focus. So those are two tips. And I would say use them selectively. The other thing, the reason you might not want to use high speed um, continuous is because if you have it set to, like I have, next tip is shoot uh, a JPEG and a RAW. Then if you think if you burst off 15 frames in one second, that's 15 files times two. Now you have 30 files. So that's something to keep in mind too, is um, I recommend uh, shooting in JPEG and RAW so you have that uh, Fuji film simulation on your JPEG, but then you can always use the, the RAW if there's something else you wanna do. Uh, so for flexibility reasons, I recommend shooting in JPEG and RAW. But just remember, if you're in that high speed continuous drive mode, you're gonna get a ton, a ton of files. So you wanna be aware of that. So I mentioned another tip is to conserve the battery is uh, use the single shot drive mode instead of the continuous shot. That's also for to conserve your battery, but also to conserve um, your storage space on your memory card as well. Uh, another tip. So another tip is an autofocus mode that you might want to use is face tracking and eye tracking. Yeah, you might think of this typically for portraits or event photography, but for street photography, it can really pay off as well because you might have something set up where you're trying to capture somebody's expression or really that human element, the focal point is gonna be on the human subject. So you might wanna use face tracking and eye tracking as well. All right, we talked about shooting in JPEG and RAW so you have that flexibility later of choosing uh, which file you wanna work with or share. Um, another tip is to use the built-in ND filter and that's this switch right here, you just pull it and uh, hold it for like three seconds and it'll, it'll pop on. It's a four stop ND filter. All right, uh, I found this doorway that I was interested in as a frame for a composition. Um, I took a shot of it and then I noticed a trash can here. Allow me to put my uh, tripod here, my mini tripod. Camera's pointing that way. Um, live view shooting is um, on the Fujifilm uh, smartphone app. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place myself in this shot. So I'm gonna be over here and from right here, this should be hidden. Um, that should be hidden and I'm just gonna tap this 
Now the thing is it takes the picture right away. So what I want to is I want to enable a two second timer on here. Ooh, it lost the connection. So while it lost the connection, I'm going to hit my Q menu and we're going to go down to a two second timer. So this is kind of nice. It's a grid. You can program as many things as you want on here. There's 16. I'm just going down to self timer and you can roll it from 10 seconds off to two seconds. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set this right up and then I'm going to connect the live view shooting again, get in the frame, trigger it, and then position myself as I want. I can trigger it and be in the frame and not be <laughs> seen triggering it in the frame. All right, so the speed is 250th, so it should stop motion. I'm gonna hit that, it's gonna count down. And so what we should have is a shot of me rounding the corner. I have a little trouble with the smartphone app, so I'm just gonna go 10 second timer, put myself in the shot. But the thing I wanna communicate is I'm gonna turn on the ND filter. And with the ND filter on, it dims the exposure, it lets, cuts the light that's coming in, and I can go from 2 50th of a second down to like one over eight. And I can drop my ISO even more. Actually, I'm gonna go to one over four. So a quarter of a second, and um, I'm gonna go to the 10 second timer, Q menu, and then down and scroll over to 10 second timer. I'm gonna put the focus point right on the door, trigger, it's counting down 10, nine, eight, seven, six. And then I'm gonna be right over here. So now what we should see is that I'm blurred in the frame as we hit the play button. So yeah, it actually worked. Now I could work out the composition. If I had a vertical arrangement, uh, I could have the shot more like this, which might be better since the doorway is uh, vertical. But there you have an idea of how you can have some creative elements in street photography using your ND filter. All right, so I'm gonna go over to um, Ektar, which is my C4 setting. I just like the uh, flag composition with the, uh, the leaves. Uh, caught by the sunlight at the top, and then uh, the lamp post. I'm gonna try that in a couple different arrangements. A little bit, uh, there we go, kind of vertical orientation, very cool. All right, I like that. Actually, I like that uh, tree just caught by the uh, sunlight over there. That was beautiful. And with the Ektar uh, composition, uh, film recipe, it really gets a golden kind of auburn look into it straight on the JPEG. JPEG. All right, let's keep moving on. The way I recommend using this is if you want to incorporate movement, so you slow your shutter speed down. And so I would probably have this on a tripod or rest it on a surface. You, you trigger it. And then if you have your shutter to like one eighth of a second and a car is going through or a person's walking, they'll have some, uh, some interesting blur and show kind of action or movement. Um, but the ND filter will block that light or cut that light so that your exposure is not overblown. So remember to use your built-in ND filter. It's a cool tool. All right, another thing to remember um, about getting the right exposure, we talked about the ND filter and kind of using that to cut the light and uh, add some motion blur. But don't be afraid to bump your ISO. The ISO on this can go up quite high and I've used it a lot, 10,000 ISO, and I don't get a disturbing amount of grain. Um, especially if you're using a film simulation in black and white, sometimes you have a grain effect on there. But just don't be afraid. This is a very, very high quality camera. Don't be afraid to bump up the ISO, especially as you're shooting later in the afternoon or the evening. All right, so the secret weapon that I keep talking about is the Fuji smartphone app. Um, so I, uh, I recommend using it as a remote control or a remote trigger. So what you can do is connect it. I find it, it's easily connected. You just open it and your uh, camera will automatically detect and then choose uh, live shooting. And then you can set your camera somewhere, put it on a tripod and you can move You can get that composition dialed in and then move out of the way and you can trigger uh, your, uh, your shot with the, the phone. So it's cool. And you can also adjust your camera settings. So if this is, um, I wouldn't recommend doing this in a busy urban environment, but you can put this across the street and then move and kind of sit uh, and watch for the right moment using your, uh, your smartphone app as a, a monitor. So try that. Is that a real dog? <laughs> it looks like a statue. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's 
Yeah, is that your dog? Yeah, that's mine. Can I take a picture? Sure. Yeah? Uh, how friendly is Rocky? He's friendly, but take off your mask. He doesn't okay. like masks because you know, he can't really, you know. Will he come out? He does. Okay. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi, Rocky. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm intimidated. No, he just has a serious look. He's got a very <laughs> serious look. Rocky, Good baby. You, I know you're not supposed to go out. I know you're not supposed to go out. Rocky's good. Rocky's like, why doesn't the guy know how to operate his camera? Hey, baby. Yeah, you're doing so good. Rocky, I'm just going to turn this one setting off that's caused me a problem. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Rocky's like, it's over. And I'm going to turn my shoulder to you. Man. That, oh, Rocky, you're going to be a mo Yeah. You're going to be, oh. Rocky, you are a movie star. They start posing on. Yeah. You're not going You're supposed to be inside. Rocky wants to play. That's such a great. Rocky. All right, thank you for joining me. Um, please uh, give this video a like if you liked it. Leave me a comment. Let me know your street photography shooting tips with the XV100 or without. And uh, I'm learning a lot. Uh, I had a couple of frustrations uh, with the smartphone app, had trouble connecting. Of course, I have the X-T4 here. Pablo's filming on it. Shout out to Buenos Dias Imagery. So go check out his channel. I'll link a, uh, leave a link below to his channel. Uh, but the smartphone app at first connected to the X-T4 and then I had trouble getting it to work uh, with the XV, uh, X100V. So I'm learning about that and had some other um, trouble with, I think when you bump these dials, you press them in, it changes functions. So I had some times when I thought I should be able to change ISO and I wasn't able to access it on the front command dial. So it's just all a part of learning and that's why, I, honestly, I made this YouTube channel so to force myself to get out and to practice and to create and share. And honestly, there is no end point. Like you don't get to, I'm graduated and I know everything about this camera or any camera. So that's just one thing I wanted to share with you is keep pressing on, keep creating. And thanks for joining me here. Thanks, and thanks Pablo for filming. <laughs>